Hey, what's going on guys? Mike back here with another video and today we are talking about infotainment systems in vehicles. Now, that's tough for me to say because I just used to call it a radio, but it's so much more than a radio these days. Uh, back in the day when you wanted to have your locks lock when you put it in gear or got the, a certain speed, you had to open the door, you had to turn the key halfway, you had to hit the brakes twice to get it to just to do that. Now everything is on the radio and that's a good thing and a bad thing. The bad thing is because if you want to mod and put any kind of new radio in or any kind of sound system in, you're stuck with what the manufacturer gives you. And the good thing is, it's just they've stepped up big time, in my opinion, on how good they are. So what I want to do is go over with you guys my system in my vehicle and show you all the uh, ins and outs and the tricks that they offer. So here is my radio and this is the welcome screen of everything that you're shown once it pops up. Now uh, you have your audio, you have your phone and uh, your projection which is your uh, at this point we'll go ahead and pluck the iPhone in and that will pop up and you give that a second and your Apple CarPlay will pop up. So when I plug my uh, phone in my vehicle, it disconnects from Bluetooth because it's being controlled by the iPhone itself, so you no longer need that, which is nice. Uh, you have your settings, your weather, text. Again, this is something else that if you have Android, you will control through that, and we'll get into more of that in a different video. If you want to see me do Android Drive versus Apple CarPlay, give this video a thumbs up, and uh, of course, if you're stopping by for the first time, subscribe. All right, so, you have your second screen here, which is nice because you can either swipe it or you can just hit the arrows on the sides there uh, to get to where you need to go. Now, they do have traffic in here, which I believe is through your OnStar. And uh, again, I don't use that a whole lot um, unless maybe I'm going somewhere. But at that point, I'm usually either using my Google Maps or uh, my Apple Maps to do that. And they have navigation in here. Again, something else that, uh, again, if you're using uh, the iPhone or the uh, Android, you use your Google Maps or Apple Maps when it comes to that. So I don't use that a whole lot to begin with. But if someone doesn't want to plug in, you have the navigation on there, which does work pretty well. Now, in my opinion, it is very Apple-esque when it comes to how this is set up, and that's a good thing. Uh, I think they did a great job with the uh, ease of navigation through this and where you need to go. So the stereo itself, uh, when you're looking at it, if you're plugged into your iPhone, uh, it'll go right to the song that you've been playing last, and we do have it turned down. But down here at the bottom, you do have uh, an unlimited amount of presets that you can set up uh, for your uh, car. Now, I think you can have up to 50, but I don't really need that many. So I have those down at the bottom. Now, I listen heavily to Sirius Satellite Radio or Sirius XM, so that's pretty much where I live and uh, I can go in and I can do a direct tune, which is very intuitive, and I do like that. You can go into um, do tune select as well, and that will allow me to uh, set up if a song comes on by an artist or an artist comes on, I can have it notify me when that comes on. I don't have any of those set up. Now, if you notice up here at the top, you do have access to your different buttons. The nice thing is, even though uh, Apple CarPlay is not on here, if you're going to hit those buttons, it will take you directly to uh, Apple CarPlay, and give you access to that so no fear you can at least get in there and then it'll take you to your last uh, setup so if I have that like that and I'm in here and I hit text it'll take me to the main screen so if you've left off at the main screen that's where it will take you but if you're somewhere else it will take you to your last screen seriously with the f***ing planes now the nice thing is if you want to get back to the home screen you just simply hit the home and that will take you back to your main display. So what I want to show you guys now is the settings. This is where a lot of your functionality lives for your vehicle as well as your radio. You can set up your date and time, you can display your clock uh, if you want that on or off, which again is a very nice uh, preference if you want to do that. You can have it set up by your date there and uh, you can set the time and you can actually, if you're a 24 hour person, you can do that. Uh, most vehicles have that. The next thing you have is your rear seat reminder. If you're a parent or a pet owner, it's nice to have that because if you open that back door uh, while the car is, uh, you know, before you start out, before you get out at the end of your trip, it will remind you uh, that there's someone back there. Now, I would hope that everyone would know that they left their dog or child back there. That would be bad. Language, of course, you see they've got uh, their setup there. Valet mode, I don't know that I would really use it, but if you were to put that in there, on your valet mode. You put it in there twice. Now, if you're going somewhere and uh, they valeted your vehicle, once you've locked that in there, 
they can't uh, unlock your car and get into your stereo and do any of that stuff. Why that is, I really don't know, so. Now they also have a teen driver mode, which again will allow you to set up uh, preferences for your car. Uh, the next thing is radio. Now the radio, you can manage your favorites, and uh, that's nice because you can go on and pick what you want to pick while you're listening. And like I said, this has 60 <laughs> presets on there. Now the next thing is you can show the number of favorites that you have on there. I just have auto to where I add it, it will add it, but you really can show all of them on there. Next is your auto volume. Uh, you can have that set up. I have it off because it's not something that I really worry about. Uh, what I do have set up is maximum startup. Now this is the max volume that it can be when you turn your vehicle on. I have it just at about at a quarter uh, maybe a little bit higher, but it's fine to do that. Uh, it's not exactly the loudest system in the world, so that works fine for me. Next thing I want to show you guys is vehicle. Now this is uh, has to be started, so let's uh, give that a start. So what I want to show you guys here uh, is what's in vehicle. Now this controls pretty much everything uh, in your vehicle that you can imagine. Climate and air quality. You can do the uh, auto fan speed when you hit your button down here for auto on your uh, system. You can have a rear defogger set up, whether you want that on or not. Why you don't want that on, I have no idea. Uh, the next thing you down here is collision and detection system. You can have uh, your alert type, which will be beeps, or safety alert seat, which this seat does vibrate. And uh, forward collision system, uh, alert, or you can alert and brake. I do like that because you're not always sure what someone's doing in front of you. It's much better than you are park assist which is awesome when you are driving this and uh, you have sensors on the front and the back and if you get too close to something it will tell you if you are too close mm -hmm. now this right here is telling me that I am close to that and uh, on my vehicle on my display it will tell me green yellow red and how close I am to something so that is very very nice to have that you also have the option uh, if you've got a tow bar attached so it's not constantly beeping that you're going to hit something. All right, so next is my favorite, which is comfort and convenience. Uh, because I have power seats, auto memory recall, which is cool because it will automatically go to my settings once I get in the vehicle. The easy exit option is awesome for someone t short like me because I do put the seat up and that way the seat will go all the way down and back so it's easy to get out. If you're a taller person, you're probably not going to change out a whole lot uh, unless you have the seat all the way back and you want it to go up to get out. That might be easier for you. Chime volume, I really just have that low. Next I got the reverse tilt mirror. Uh, again, this is purely preference. Uh, I do have it set for both driver and passenger that when I put it in reverse, the mirrors do go down and a lot of the times it's for backing in the parking spots. It does get a little bit annoying sometimes if you're just straight backing up, and uh, you know some people do just like to have it on one uh, or the other, or you can turn it off completely. Next is the auto mirror folding, which is very nice if you want to hold down your lock button, and once the door's locked, you hold it down for another two seconds, the mirrors will actually fold in, which is a very nice feature to have. Next we have is lighting. Uh, you can set up your vehicle locator lights, which you, uh, when you hit the buttons, the lights will go on. Uh, exit lighting, there are lights underneath uh, the mirrors, the rear view mirrors, as well as uh, your lights inside the cab will stay on for an extended period of time before they go off, which is very nice at night. Next we have the power door locks. You can go ahead and set up your auto door unlock and your delayed lock. The delayed lock is nice because you can actually set it up. Uh, if you lock your doors and then close them, uh, it will delay it for about 10 seconds before it locks it. So that's actually pretty cool. Next we have the remote lock, unlock and start. Uh, you can remote unlock with light feedback. You can set that up if you want it on or off. Remote lock feedback, which you can do lights and horn, lights only and horn only, or you can turn it off if you don't want to do it anything. Uh, remote door unlock, you can actually do all doors with a single click, uh, or just the driver door with a single click, and a double click will unlock all the doors in your car. I just do the drivers because that's typically I'm the one that's always here. For remote start, there's a couple different options. They've got Remote start for cooled seats and remote start for heated seats. Now, of course, in the summer, I have the cool seats on, and in the summer, I have the uh, the hot seats off. So in the winter, we would reverse that. Next is really cool remote window operation, which I use this more often than not. Uh, it's nice because if you've got a hot car and you unlock the car and you hold it down, those mirrors will go out, and then if you hold it even longer, the windows will go down. Unfortunately, 
they don't go up, which I don't know why GMC doesn't do that. That would be awesome. So that's pretty much it for the vehicle functions, which again is a lot. Uh, you can set up your Bluetooth, which you can pair a new device, device management, ringtones, voicemail numbers, all that good stuff, text message alerts. Next on the list is your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can set those up with uh, uh, different devices. You can manage the devices that you're using. Same thing goes with Android Auto. And you can literally turn that off and turn that on. So if you plug your device in and you don't want it to go to that, that's actually pretty nice if you're someone that doesn't use it. Now, uh, there are some differences between CarPlay and Android Auto. So, uh, again, I mentioned earlier, I think we should do a separate video on that. Again, if you want to see that, let me know. Next we have is your voice control, which, uh, confidence threshold? I, I don't know. I, I didn't really know this is a difference between the whole, <laughs> the whole setup of that. Prompt length, uh, to give you a little bit longer to reply when you're, uh, uh, talking to the system, audio feedback speed, fast to get it out. I don't have time to wait for you to keep talking. Uh, display what can I say tips. I do have that still on. As a matter of fact, I can turn that off. Um, I don't use it a whole lot uh, when you're talking to the stereo itself as opposed to when I have my CarPlay put in. I always use CarPlay, so that's pretty much how I always set it up and I can say, hey Siri, and uh, that'll set that up for me. So that is about it for voice. Uh, down your display, you can calibrate it or you can turn the display off. Uh, again, I don't know why I would want to turn the display off. I can just do that with the power button right here. This vehicle uh, does have a rear view camera, as I showed earlier. The guidance lines are nice because it'll tell you, uh, you know, where the back of the vehicle is, and it'll give you a little bit uh, of a setup, and you know where you're backing up. The parking assist symbols is nice because it'll let you know when you get close to things. The next, if you want to turn to factory settings, I guess if you're selling the vehicle, you can do that. You got your software info there, which is important if you need to do an update. Uh, Wi-Fi. This vehicle does have uh, a Wi-Fi system in it, and uh, it's $20 a month uh, for unlimited, which is actually pretty cool. So you can set that up. Now, of course, here you can actually access any Wi-Fi that's in the area, but I actually do have my own network on here, so I don't necessarily have to worry about doing that. And that is pretty much it for settings. Now, that is a lot, I know. Now, this system does have uh, weather on it, which, again, I don't really use a whole lot of, but uh, you can take a look at a map uh, <laughs> and see where the storms are. But it's really difficult to read. I'd rather just use my phone uh, to try to look at that because, again, it's not the best... Uh, uh, quality. Now I mentioned earlier the whole idea of uh, the text in the phone. Uh, if you have your Android uh, hooked up it will take you to the phone because it does not use uh, a system like this on it. But when you hit it and I've got my CarPlay plugged in it takes me to the main screen. So here's the main display on CarPlay. As you see there you have access to all the apps that are accessible uh, via the iPhone. Now I don't have Spotify or Pandora and I believe there are some other apps. If you guys want to see me again compare CarPlay to Android Drive, we can certainly do that. Um, but I really like how intuitive the CarPlay is uh, as far as reading messages and uh, you know going through all of that. Thank you, Siri. Uh, going into your music I think is very intuitive. You can go into your albums, uh, you can go into your artists. Now it does limit your access while you're driving. So parked is uh, pretty much unlimited how you want to look for things, but driving they want you to use your voice to do that. Apple Maps, well, Apple Maps is Apple Maps. I prefer using Google um, Google Maps over it, but it is what it is, and I'll use that when I need to. It's been fairly good. So that's CarPlay. So that's the infotainment system uh, on my truck here. Uh, I think it's very intuitive. I like the way that it's set up. It works well, not a whole lot of lag, and uh, I just think it's a good system. Every once in a while when I'm plugging my CarPlay in, it doesn't connect. I don't know if that's the Apple CarPlay doing that or that's my stereo system. It, it really all depends. You can plug your uh, phone into any one of my USBs and that will uh, attach it to CarPlay or Android Drive, uh, depending on what you're using. But uh, if you guys have any questions or you want to see anything else, hit me up in the comments down below. And of course, I want to thank you all for the continued support. You all have a good day and I'll talk to you later.